Hello and welcome guys and today I'm gonna to be doing something a little different I'm gonna be stepping outside of my regular box and I'm gonna be doing a review of the 2014 movie line of the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and this is sort of a video response I listened to the Turtle Power podcast it's a podcast obviously all about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and you guys know that I'm a big fan of turtles as well as uh, uh, collecting Transformers I collect turtle stuff as well so in their last episode they mentioned uh, they talked about the new movie line figures that had just come out and they they did mention however that none of the members of the show had picked up any of the figures yet so they asked that if any of the listeners have gotten any of the new toys to give them some feedback and let them know what they thought so I figured since I already do video reviews on, on Transformers, mainly Optimus Prime, I figured I'd, I'd just go ahead and film a quick video review of the 2014 line for the Ninja Turtles and post that as a video response to their question in the, in the podcast. So um, I have to say right off the bat, first thing I'm going to say is that I am not a fan of the new design for the Turtles and the way they look in the movie. I, I'm just, I haven't gotten used to it. I, now, as the newer trailers come out and I see more interactions with the Turtles, I, I'm starting to like it a little better. I, I kind of like the way that they interact with each other better. And, and, and I'm going to go into the movie with an open mind, but I still cannot get used to those designs. I don't like them. That being said, those new designs may not look good to me on screen, but I think they translate really, good, really well into action figure form because I love these figures. These are really, really cool figures. I wasn't expecting them to like them as much as I do, but I really do like them a lot. They're very posable and uh, uh, they just, they're very good figures. So uh, we're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna do the review here like uh, as we are now. Um, I'm just taking a quick group shot here just to open the video up. Um, these and then and but we're going to be taking a look at them uh one at a one at a time here and we're going to be looking at them side by side with some of their older counterparts so uh real quick these figures all range in size from four inches tall would be the shortest figure and that would be splinter right over here he's the shortest of the bunch at four inches tall and then the tallest figure is shredder and he comes up just under six inches tall making him the tallest of the group so uh the trench coat Raphael here gives him a run for his money but just short of 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 uh beating splinter or shredder rather over here and uh so yeah so i'm a big fan of all the figures um i'm a big fan of this van this van is so cool quite possibly my favorite van and i've got three vans and this may be quite possibly my favorite the only action figure that i don't have on this line is the foot soldier and i honestly don't know if i'm gonna pick it up uh i'm just i, I it just looks like random gi joe figure to me it doesn't look anything like a, a foot soldier to me. It just, I can't, I, I don't know. I just really can't get over that figure. I've, I've passed him up every time I've seen it. And I honestly, to, at this point, I still don't know if I'm going to pick it up. But this right here, what you see in front of you right here on the table, these, um, all these figures in this van, I love them. So let's move over to the regular spot on the table and let's take a, take a look at these guys one at a time. Okay, so starting off with Leonardo, because, you know, Leonardo leads, and everybody else comes later. <laughs> um, so, that was a lame joke. Alright, so here we have Leonardo in his, uh, his new movie look. And uh, I, I, I really like, I really, like I said, I'm not a fan of the way these guys look in the movies, but I really do like the way these guys look in the uh, in, in action figure form. Um, he's got some, it, what, what looks like maybe some, some armor... Uh, and, and from what it looks in the movie, it looks kind of like that bamboo kind of trying to be like a samurai armor. Uh, but he's got that armor mounted on the chest there. He's got some uh, some shoulder pads and he's got some sh uh, forearm pads out here. He's got his two swords. He's got a, uh, a sheath on the back to mount the swords onto. This is removable as well. And this is not exactly a round peg. It's got a flat edge on one side. So when you pop it in, it it's only going to go in one way. But it's a good thing that this is removable because you actually have to take these guys off when you're going to put them in the um, into the van. The uh, the swords will fit in here quite nicely. They just slide in, just like that, just like you would expect them to. So, 
There you go. And um, and yeah, so he's got, as far as accessories go, besides the um, the swords and the uh, sheaves, he's got like this, I don't know if this is a handkerchief or or I, I don't know what this is, but he's got this this thing hanging around his neck, and this thing moves around. Now, it is if that bothers you, this these heads are on a ball joint, so these are really easy to pop off and take that off if you want, and, and then just leave them without. You can do that as well. But I just, I just leave it on. I've kind of learned to not let it bug me all that much. Um, one thing I'm going to say about Leonardo, very, very, tip, very common, very typical of this figure when he comes out of the package, is that his um, tails for his bandana tend to be pointing like up like this, almost like bunny ears. So I took, uh, I took the hair dryer to mine. I just popped the head off and I took the hair dryer and let these get nice and soft so that they would droop down some. And, uh, and that it actually improved the look of this figure a lot more. Now, over the last couple of weeks or so, they've kind of started to get a little bit of memory and they started to stand up on their own again, as you can see there. Uh, it's not as bad as when it first came out of the package. When he first comes out of the package, he's kind of like that. So it's not as bad as he was out of the package, but it is starting to get that, that, that memory and it's starting to pop up again. So I'm going to have to hit that with a hairdryer again. But that's, that's an easy fix for you guys when you guys get them. As far as articulation goes, like you saw the head was on a ball joint. The, uh, the shoulders are on a universal joint, so you've got a nice range of motion all the way around with this guy. Uh, you've got a, a swivel right above the biceps, or right above the elbow, rather, so you can spin this guy around. He's got a nice... 90 degree bend at the elbow there and um, he does not have and this is kind of a shame he does not have wrist articulation some of the other figures do the turtles do not it's kind of a shame um, no uh, no waist articulation either but the uh, the hips are on universal joints so they they have a good range of motion they have a, uh, a rotation and they got an in and out and they got an up and down now you are a little hindered as you're probably seeing right now he's got kind of this skirt I don't know if this is a skirt or I, I honestly I don't know what to call these things, but he's got like this skirt and armor piece right here in the front, and that is a little prohibitive of the motion. So as, as you're probably seeing now, uh, you've got a rotation right at the knee as well. You got a good bend at the knee, um, not quite a 90 going back, uh, but for some reason he can kick forward, and that looks like a, a soccer player's shin break, which would be very painful. And uh, nothing at the ankles either, but you've got the rotation at the knee, so uh, it's not it's not really necessary, I don't think, because you can still get some really nice poses out of these guys, and I've had a lot of fun posing these guys. So one last time, we'll get Leonardo standing here on his own, and then we'll bring in, show off Leonardo. Let's come on, Leo, give me a good pose here, and uh, and then we'll have him with his next show him off next to his original counterpart and also showing him off with the two current Nick Turtles iterations of Leonardo just to kind of give you a side-by-side -side comparison there it looks like this Leo is actually taller but it's not the thing of it is is that these new turtles they have kind of this hunched over um, pose to them so it, he's actually just a little taller, but when you look at them, it doesn't seem that way. So there's Leonardo. Now here we have Donatello, and Donatello could quite possibly be my least favorite of the new designs for the movie, which is sad because Donatello is typically my favorite turtle. I, re I really like Donatello. I've always liked Donatello. my favorite turtle. And I really don't like what it looks, what seems to be going on with him in the movie. The whole thing with the glasses, broken in the middle with tape, and the way he squeals when he sees guys with guns. And it just seems like they're out to perpetuate the whole nerd and geek thing with him. And, and, I, and I really hope that's not the case. The movie's not out yet, guys. I really hope that's not the case. Uh, again, o open mind going into the movie, but that's what the previews are, are, are seem to be showing. Um, so yeah, so he's my least favorite of the new designs in the movies. But again, action figure, really, really cool. Now here's his bow. Uh, I think it's his bow staff. I'm not really sure what this is. Uh, it's obviously a stick or a rod of some sort. Uh, it looks like it's all mechanized. I don't know if maybe this is going to compress, open and close, kind of like a Robin staff would. I don't know. We're just going to have to wait to the movie to see. So there, there's his bow right there. 
Um, as far as the figure figure goes, he's the 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 skinniest of the bunch and the tallest of the bunch out of the four turtles he's the tallest and he's also got these uh, now these look nice these actually look kind of nice these kind of like samurai looking skirts here and i don't know if these are going to be like solar panel looking things in the movie or what but at least in action figure mode the form the, these actually look kind of nice and he's got some some straps going up over his chest and then when you go around in this back he's got this uh, this backpack on him and uh, we don't know what any of this is going to be yet it kind of looks like a proton pack uh, trust me, guys, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just had a geek moment. So, um, yeah, that kind of looks like a proton pack. Obviously, that's not what it's going to be, but it's kind of what it looks like. And then he's got these goggles that he wears. And in the movie, he's going to have headphones. And he's got this Bluetooth piece that he talks with as well and all that. But they toned it down a little bit for the figure, which is actually a good thing. So he's got these goggles up here that, again, they kind of look like Ecto goggles. He kind of looks like a Ghostbuster. And I think that comment has been made before. But this figure kind of looks like it's uh, harking back to a Ghostbusters figure with the proton pack and the Ecto goggles there. But uh, we'll just have to wait to the movie to find out what all this stuff's going to be. Other than that, though, uh, he's a really cool-looking figure. I, I, I like the head sculpt on this guy, actually. I love the way the bandanas are long and just kind of hanging out the front there. Articulation is going to be the same. The head's ball-jointed, so you got up and down, you got side to side, you got all over the place. Now, one thing about these guys is you can't really give them, like, a looking to the side kind of stance because of the way the, the the angle that the ball joint is on what they end up doing is they end up kind of tilting their head so if you try to look to the side that's what end up, ends up happening so again that's because of the angle if you look at the way they are you know the figures are kind of hunched over and that ball joint ends up pointing straight to the front so when you mount the the head back on you know you've got a head that is looking straight forward but you can't look to the side not without that angling. So that's a bit of a shame. But it's there. It's on a ball joint. It moves around. Uh, articulation pretty much the same on all four of these turtles. you got a universal joint on the on the shoulder there. you got your rotation on the elbow. Elbow, no wrist, no waist. Uh, universal joint at the hips. Knee bend and rotation at the knee. So uh, I, I'm probably not going to repeat that for all four figures. Uh, that's two in a row now that have said it so I think I, I think that pretty much covers at least all four turtles the other figures uh, have different articulation and we'll get to that when we get to those figures as you can see here the backpack is removable so if this bugs the absolute heck out of you you can take this off um, you can't take off the goggles but you can actually take off the belt I have actually successfully taken the belt I think it was on Raphael or Leonardo, I actually took all the belts and everything off of him, and, and you can pop him back on. I probably recommend against it, uh, but the backpack can be removed. Now, this is one case, though, where you don't need to remove the backpack on Donnie to mount him into the, into the van, so that's actually pretty cool. You can actually leave the you can actually leave that backpack mounted on. So we'll have one last look at Donnie here real quick by himself. And then here he will show him off with his original counterpart and hopefully we can get him to stand because these older figures are difficult to stand sometimes you can see him teetering there i knew it <laughs> i knew that was going to happen uh but uh, come on buddy now and now this donnie wants to follow suit all right this what's going on here we got a falling donnie party here all right are you guys gonna stand for me now cool all right so there's New Donnie with original Donnie, and here we have the current Nickelodeon Donatello as well. And I'm uh, in in case uh, you're watching this, uh, I guess this is not aimed so much at the Turtle Power Podcast guys, but to the uh, to the casual viewer. If you're not aware, I am showing two different iterate two different figures for the current Nickelodeon. Ninja Turtles, and that's because these guys are the original release, the, the the first Turtles that came out for the release, and they're very nicely detailed. They got a lot of muscles and stuff like that, a lot more serious looking figures. These are the later released Battle Shell figures. Uh, they're a little uh, a little more um, cartoon looking figures. They have more animated heads. Um, the textures are a lot smoother on these guys, and they also have the opening shells for storing extra weapons. So. That's why I'm showing because they they are actually um, aesthetically different figures. 
So that's why I'm showing them off with two different iterations of the current Nickelodeon Turtles as well. So you're going to see that with the other figures, with the other two Turtles as well. So there it is. There it is, uh, Donatello. So let's move on. And moving on to Michelangelo. Now, Michelangelo is probably my least favorite out of the four Turtles designs for these figures. Um, he's the he's the shortest, and that's because he's the most hunched over, which I'm actually cool with. I actually kind of like that. But it's the whole um, I don't know the these pants that he's wearing. <laughs> I don't know if these are sweatpants or what they're supposed to be. He's got knee pads. And, uh, and some pants here and some uh, tennis shoes that he's cut out the front so his toes can fit into with a sweater tied around his waist. I, I'm just, I'm not a fan. Sorry, guys. I'm not a fan of turtles wearing pants and sneakers. I'm, I'm just not. Um, but again, you know, tra be be looks better in figure mode than, than it does in, in the movie so far. Um, cool action figure. He's got the same articulation as all the other guys. Uh, one thing I didn't mention with Donnie, uh, or, or Leo for that matter, Leo is the only one that has uh, a, a place to store weapons uh, when he's not using them. Uh, he's got those sheaves on his back. Everybody else, uh, as you can see here with, uh, oh, that I was kind of going for the, yeah, we'll find you, <laughs> thing that he does in the trailer. Uh, that's kind of what I was going for with that with that pose there. But if you can see around, if you go around the back here, you can see that he doesn't really have anywhere to store his nunchucks when he's not using them. Same thing with Donnie; because he's got that backpack, so he doesn't really have anywhere to put that put his bow staff or whatever that is uh, when he's not using it. Uh, sadly, uh, Mikey only comes with one pair of nunchucks. He doesn't he doesn't come with two as he normally does. Uh, instead, he comes with uh, this thing. And the proper name for this, I believe, is Yonose Keseyama is the actual name of this weapon. I know that a lot of people have asked, I don't know, oh, what is the name of that weapon? So there you go. That's, that's the name of that weapon. Not really. That was Spanish for I don't know what it's called. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, uh, Mikey's okay. Um, I'm not a, not my favorite design with the pants and the shoes, but you know he's okay. He stands well. He poses well, and he looks good with the other figures. So uh, there's one one last look at Mikey from the new movie by himself. We get those things out of here, and then we'll show him off next to his original counterpart. And his two Nick Turtle counterparts right here. So there is Mikey. And moving on to Raphael. And quite possibly, and this came as a surprise to me, my favorite out of the new figure designs. Um, this guy, just check him out. He's big and bulky. I'm typically not a fan of the full head cover for the bandana, but... In, in this case, for this figure, he's all big and muscular, and uh, he's got the full bandana. He just he looks like he's ready to kick butt. This figure looks like a badass, and I'm really, really enjoying this figure. Um, now, uh, the sculpting is nice on this guy, and I've I've heard jokes made about his shell having abs. Yeah, he is. He's the biggest one. He's the most muscular one. And in fact, it does it doesn't translate in the figure mode how big he actually is in the trailers. For the new movie, apparently in the new movie, he's going to be considerably the biggest of all the turtles. You know, just a huge, muscular guy. Uh, doesn't translate as much in figure mode, but he is bigger than bulkier than all the other figures. Not the tallest. Donnie's the tallest, but he's also the lankiest. But uh, he's, the, he's the second tallest and the widest and the bulkiest and just very muscular looking, very strong looking. I really enjoy the look of this figure. It just looks like a total badass. It looks like he's going to kick your butt. Really cool figure. Uh, he comes with his, uh, with his sigh, obviously. And uh, you can, it takes a little bit of doing, but you can pose him with the side going between the fingers. Um, I tried to get him to pose with the handle of the side going through the fingers. And that can also be done as well. It does separate the fingers a little bit. So if you're not a fan of, you know, it does bend the plastic a little bit. So you may want to be careful with that if you want to do it. Or maybe not leave them that way for extended periods of time. If you have these guys on display on your shelf, maybe not do that. 
uh, you know, just for extended periods of time or such. Um, I like to do, for this particular figure, I like to just put the size pointing down and just kind of give them a fighting stance. And, and, and I just think that looks so badass. So there he is all the way around. You can see his shell, nice dark color. Um, he's got the, uh, he's got some, uh, I, I don't know what this is. I don't, I don't know if this is going to be leather or what, but he's got something wrapped around his waist and then he's got the over the shoulder, ba uh, strap there. Um, but there's, there he is. And I think he looks really, really cool. One last look at Raph by himself and then we'll bring him, bring in the original Raphael for comparison and the two current Nickelodeon turtles or Raphael's rather just for comparison real quick and there's la there's a quick shot at the four of them so there's Raphael so moving on here we have this mysterious figure and if you don't know who this figure in disguise could be well let's remove the disguise and find out shall we you can you've got a little hat here you can remove this hat you got some glasses you can take off and then you got a scarf that also comes off and now we have Raph again. That's right. Raphael got two releases so far in this new movie line. And I guess there's going to be a scene in the movie where him and April are moving through the city and he's got to go in disguise. So he dons his classic look of the trench coat and hat. And, and I absolutely love that they did that. For this, it's kind of a callback to the old turtle stuff, and I and I really, really love that they did that. Now the accessories that he comes with are obviously he's got the coat, he's got this scarf, and as you can see here, it's just kind of a clip-on cl uh, scarf. So this this just clips on right over his face, and in in just uh, it goes around under and around his face, so it goes all the way around the head, just like so. And then he's got these glasses, and they almost look like little Barbie glasses. And these guys, they just, you just push them on and they hold on onto themselves right there. And you can see the accessories stay on pretty good. Now the hat just sits there. You put the hat on, it just sits there. It's, you know, when you're posing them or you got them on display on your shelf or whatever, the hat will stay on there fine. But as soon as you move them, that hat's going to fall off. So just be aware of that, guys. Now, here's something that I discovered about this figure. And this was completely by accident. When I opened this figure out of the package, this arm was actually popped off like that. And um, it's, it's actually a happy accident that that happened because otherwise I would not have known that this figure has removable arms. And uh, you, can take his, you can pop his arms off and you can actually take the trench coat all the way off. And as you can see, it's just a, a rubber trench coat. You know, there's no opening on the front or anything like that, but that's just a rubber piece. In fact, it'll stand on its own. And then when you look at Raph here, he's pretty much the same as the other figure, just without any of the accessories. He doesn't have any of his um, this waist leather skirt thing going on. He doesn't have any of that. Uh, he doesn't have his over-the-shoulder strap. You can see that he's got. He's. It's the same molded figure. You can see all the divots for all of it. So you could, uh, in fact, take all of this off and put it on this figure. And then obviously he doesn't have any paint apps on him either. And I'm probably going to take care of that myself. I'm probably going to paint this figure and kind of make it like a removable trench coat figure. Um, I'm going to see if I can get another pair of arms for a, another pair of Raphael arms to put on him. So basically I'll end up having two Raphael figures with, uh, removable arms and, uh, and a removable trench coat. And now, but the, because the thing of it is, if you try to put the arms back on, you can pop these back on. You can hear them popping, so you know they're going in there. They're going in there and they're, they're staying in there, see? Uh, but here's the thing of it if you take the trench coat off now, he's got <laughs> trench coat arms and gloves, but no trench coat on, and that just, and that just looks silly. So, um, other than the arms, obviously the arms are different. They're a different mold from these guys, obviously, as you can see. But uh, other than that, the articulation on the rest of the figure is the exact same as the other Raphael because it's the same exact figure. However, it is going to be hindered due to the coat. You know, it's not like you can put this coat on, pop these arms back in. So now that the coat's back on and the figure's looking the way it was meant to look, you can't you can't really make a kick forward or anything like that because that coat's going to get in the way. So unfortunately, uh, it's a fun figure. Uh, it's fun. It, it, I'm sure it'll be fun to recreate the scene or come up with your own scenes of of a turtle in a trench coat. 
you know, and you can even recreate the scene from the first movie when he went to see Critters at the movie theater. So, you know, it's it's a fun figure to have, but it's not very posable. Um, it's it, it, but it, it it does it does display very well because that's all he's got to do is just stand there. So we'll get um. What, what do you think? I think we'll just put the hat on, just so we can call back to the old stuff. And uh, <laughs> it's not working. Anyway, there's uh there's trench coat Raphael. 